Welcome to a podcast about nothing with V. And AD. Hopefully I'm not delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we got another celebrity, Dr. Della Tagapore. Tag your it. Hey, hey, hey. Della, Dr. Della, tell us. Tell us. Introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm a preventive medicine resident at Johns Hopkins University, but right now I am one of the docs at ABC News and their medical unit. I've gotten a chance to be on a couple of their shows on Good Morning America 2020, um, their news radio show. It's It's been wild. It's been a good ride. Yo, we got a celebrity. This is amazing. <laughs> Thanks for, coming, thanks for coming to our office. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we are doing this. This is new. We're doing it via, what is this, Google Hangout? We're not in the <laughs> studio. Everybody's quarantining themselves. Quarantine. Yeah, Shit. social distancing. Oh, man. Thank you. Because I'm scared. <laughs> I so am. we do have some, I know I have questions. I was out in the world living, living very fearless. <laughs> But as you can see, I'm stuck. And I'm scared. I'm, I'm getting scared. I'm worried. So, what are some things, as you guys know, with the this whole, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a disease? Is a, it, what is it? Like, what's ha- is it a flu? Are we all sick? Everybody's telling me that we're going to get it. I'm not, like, what's happening? Is there, is there a definition to as to what it is, what's happening, and how we can contract it? This COVID-19 is what we're calling it. That's what we're calling it. So, Adrian, it's kind of, it's all over the place, right? So it is a virus. It's a part of a family of viruses called coronavirus. So that's why people were calling it new or novel. But now we've we've deemed the disease that happens from coronavirus as COVID-19. So that's just an easy way to be like, all right, if you get it, you get COVID-19. Um, and it is kind of like a flu, right? Basically, it's the, it's the same symptoms or similar symptoms. It can be everything from fever, cough, headache, body ache, even diarrhea. Some new studies are showing there's GI symptoms. So it's really hard to tell the difference. Hmm. Okay. I just learned something new because I thought it was all the same thing, coronavirus. But now I know if you get it, you have the 19. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're young again okay <laughs> uh, um so if you do you have to have more than one symptom to be considered at risk so that's a great question because you can actually have no symptoms and have COVID 19 that's kind of the scary part and all these young people especially Especially who think they're immune to everything and are still out there partying and spring breaking mm-hmm. you can have no symptoms, or you can have one, or you can have many. There's like a range of illness, basically, from asymptomatic to mild to severe. So if you're having any one of the symptoms, we ask you to, you know, be mindful of the fact that it could be COVID-19 and quarantine yourself. It sucks that it's allergy season, too. So it's, Uh, yeah. Yeah. so judged in public, guys. I have allergies. They're actually really bad. They're really bad. Like, really that's bad. what everybody said <laughs> these days, okay? That's where... So for the hypochondriacs of the world, um, when will be a good time to actually go to the doctor or go to the hospital to be seen? Because I have a couple of friends, and every time I sneeze, like I said, I have allergies. Or yeah. I'm coughing or something, debris, I choked on a bone, anything. Like, everybody's looking at me crazy. <laughs> People are looking at me crazy. Why is she and, chewing bones? Oh, should I? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, Davina. It's hard, okay? But I just, what what would be a good time to actually go seek medical attention for the symptoms or, you know, just your fear to settle your yeah. fears? No, that's, that's a real question. So usually as a doctor, I would say, you know, as soon as you start feeling something and you feel the need to go to your doctor, go to the doctor. But circumstances have changed with this. Mm-hmm. Our healthcare system is really overrun right now, and there's not enough supplies. Even though there's a lot of efforts to get those supplies, we still don't have enough. So right now, we're still asking people with mild symptoms, you know, if you just got a cough or a sneeze or a tickle, and it's stuff that you wouldn't necessarily go to an emergency room for don't go right now. You know, we still have to conserve those supplies. If you start getting a 
fever, shortness of breath, it becomes harder to manage your symptoms or something out of the ordinary, you're going to want to call your doctor. A lot of doctors have protocols in place to be like, okay, come in, but wear a mask, come in at this time, do that, go to the emergency room. Everyone's trying to do their best to direct people. Now, there is also this website that's going live. Um, it's called c19check.com, c19check.com. Dot com. And I just wrote an article about it because I really think it's a great tool. It basically helps people kind of self-triage. So if you're looking at your own symptoms um, and you're wondering, does this sound like COVID? Could this be COVID? That um, tool basically helps you figure it out. Now, it's not a guarantee. It's not a doctor. It's just an algorithm that has put in information from the CDC to help people figure out what to do. Mm. Perfect. Thank, Thank you for, you for that. that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I've got a lot of people. I'm about to text it like now. <laughs> right. I'm going to just send that downstairs to my mom because she is freaking <laughs> okay. out. She is freaking out. Um, I mean, the other thing is that, like, for people like your mom or Adrian freaking out about allergies or anything like that, most people know about their own allergies. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you have to be mindful that if it's allergy season and it's probably your allergies and your itchy and watery eyes. I mean, people tend to know their own bodies and you have to be your own best advocate. But even if you're having symptoms at all for the sake of, you know, the anxiety that's in society, Mm. just stay home. I mean, and the thing is, and then when you're out, if you are coughing or doing anything else, if you don't have a tissue to cover, make sure you're in the elbow. And that doesn't mean your elbow's up and you're coughing over it like I've seen people do, but you're covered. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's true. Teach the people. <laughs> are, you, are you guys shocked and amazed at how much people didn't know how to wash their hands? Yeah. That we were using our feet to flush the toilets before. I'm like, what was happening? Yeah, oh that's gosh. true. That's true. Ew. 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 <laughs> so, so Maybe how- it'll bring all the different viruses down now that people are doing it right. Please oh. help the people because there's some dirty <laughs> people out here. Um... <laughs> So what are some other like preventative methods? Like they say, wash your hands. Um, my mom has been taking vitamins, zinc, airborne, like literally everything. Oh, yeah. AD said we need yeah, to brush our teeth. Yesterday and the whole vitamin section is like clear. Everybody's taking <laughs> fish oil. Like, is there something I need to know? Right. Fish oil, <laughs> malaria medicine. Like it, it's just been a spike in everything. Yeah, don't take Motrin. That's crazy, especially for kids. Is so that's not actually true, not yeah. fully anyway. So all right, we're gonna have to have the whole alternative medicine and all this other crazy talk. So first of all, I've heard a lot of that, like vitamins and essential oils and humidifiers and swallow. Salt water, I don't know. I've heard it all, gotten a lot of questions about it. And, you know, like there's some things that are safe to do. You know, taking a vitamin, taking, you know, you want to steam, you want to put a humidifier on, things that are safe are okay. There is absolutely no evidence showing that it's going to help you with COVID-19. But, you know, there is evidence that vitamin depletion and things like that do stress your immune system. But you can't all of us fix something like that. That's something that you need to work on with your doctor if there is a vitamin, you know, depletion in your body. Otherwise, it's pretty safe to do those things and it's benign. But there's some crazier ones out there, you know, that I don't even want to repeat because then I'm going to have to explode it. But, you know, you just have to be very mindful that those things, if they make you feel good, if they make you feel like it's a little bit of something you have control over, it's probably okay. But it doesn't actually prevent, stop, cure, or do anything else to COVID-19. Now, the whole bit with Motrin, y'all. Okay, yes, I had to all put out a PSA for please, that because please. what ended up happening is that it was a statement that came out from the World Health Organization, the WHO, and it was just a subjective, just like somebody's opinion who said something. But then the WHO came back out and confirmed that they did not have enough evidence to make that claim. And that was not in their, that wasn't their intention at all. So there's no current evidence to say that Motrin can't be used for COVID-19. We don't know 100% if it's safe or unsafe, but there's no evidence to say that it's unsafe. So for right now, there's no reason not to. Yeah, but of course, 
directed, no ODing on anything, you know, yeah. just if you need Motrin, if Tylenol doesn't work for your headaches or body aches, then you can, you can, um, Save wait for any other updates. But for now, there's, there's nobody, there's no real evidence saying you can't use it. Yeah, because uh, the Cooper gets, um, just with the common cold, he gets really high fevers, um, yeah. sometimes up to 104. So I alternate the, I, I don't take him to the doctor because we're used to it at this point. Yes. Only yeah. when the asthma acts up. So that's why I freak out so much, um, What why I started freaking out with this whole thing. And we alternate the Tylenol and the Motrin every four hours. Um, I know doctors say you're not supposed to do this, but rub him down with a little bit of warm alcohol to bring down that temperature on his feet and stuff. Put some Vicks on the body. Yeah, put some Vicks and some, some donut grease or some shea butter on the bottom of those feet and cover that boy up and he'll sweat it out. But with this, it's like you hear so many things. Don't give a motion. I'm like, so what am I supposed to do? Um, don't do this. Don't do that. It's, it's, it's nerve wrecking. So is there a time, is there danger in waiting with someone like Cooper who does, he only has asthma issues when he gets sick. Something as simple as a common cold and his fever go, yeah. goes up. We have his nebulizer at home. We have his, um, his regular inhaler. Is there danger in waiting for someone like him to go to the hospital? And then do I force them to test him? Yeah, yeah, that's such an important question, Davina. I know how much you guys have gone through and how much Cooper has gone through. And like Cooper, so many other kids out there, so many adults suffer with asthma or yeah. with other comorbidities that put them in a slightly more at-risk category. People with, you know, diabetes, people with um, lung issues, people, you know, who have chronic long-term issues, they are slightly at higher risk. Now, the studies don't say that you're at higher risk for getting COVID-19. You're at higher risk for having more severe symptoms. Mm. And when you already are kind of challenged with that, you're already having symptoms of flu, I mean, of uh, high fever um, and shortness of breath and things like that, you don't ever want the, you know, the guidance that, oh, don't come into the hospital, don't come in the hospital. You never want that to mean don't go into the hospital if mm. there's something serious, right? So if yeah. you would take him in, then take him in. You mm. know, you don't want to ever be like, oh, it's too overrun. I can't get my kid in. No, you yeah. absolutely can. And you should. And um, the good news is that like every scientist on the planet is pretty much working on this all at once. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that are rapidly changing. For example, the FDA recently approved um, a new test that's going to be able to give results in 45 minutes. That should be available mm. in the next week or two. At least those are the estimates. Um, and so you know, things are going to change. Right now, we've been telling people, you know, you can't get tested unless you have super severe symptoms. Even if you push for it or advocate, doctors are going to make that call because of the limitations they have. Yeah. But it's going to change soon. And I think, you know, we've never really lived through an epidemic like this or a pandemic like this. Yeah. And so it's hard to see that the changes that are happening are actually really rapid in medicine. We usually can't do this stuff, you know, in a couple of weeks and months the way we have with this virus. But, you know, everyone's on the same team. Everyone wants to get help to the people who need help. It's just that we're getting, we need more supplies and, you know, we need the ability to test more people, even people with milder symptoms. And that's coming. All of that's in the works. Yeah. Yeah. I say, as I've been hearing, like, I feel like there's so much information at one time that, I've been more at ease hearing so many people go over the information and speak about it so yeah. much because it means that there's work happening and stuff like that. So that's Absolutely. something that has gone over the time. So that's good. All right, and, and I heard you speak about the Motrin thing where there was a statement made. And are there any sources that we as a people, because I don't pay attention to every news feed. List, yeah. You know, I don't, everything that pops up is just a lot. Like I said, are yeah. there any credible sources or anything that we can actually check as common everyday people to go make sure that we're being reassured in some way instead of scrolling through Instagram and, you know, realizing we're going to die every night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, aside from people tuning in and checking me out, yes, you can, I would really only go to CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. <clears throat> and then if you guys want to know like updated numbers or updated cases, you can go like, 
pretty much everyone is using the Johns Hopkins website, which is coronavirus.jhu.edu. So that's that big kind of semi-scary map that everyone's showing that, you know, has all the dots on it. And it's um, they're the ones who are kind of keeping track of the numbers. And that's going to include um, confirmed cases, total deaths and recovered cases. Now, that can be kind of overwhelming to go to that a lot. But if you if you are the type of person who gets calm by having information and knowing what's going on. That's the most credible source for um, the numbers that are going on, at least especially in the U.S., even though they keep worldwide records. So CDC is where I would really go. Okay. Yeah. Because I was going to see CNN. <laughs> <laughs> um, girl, I'm on NBC, NBC, so you better stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when should you consider quarantining yourself and then the quarantine thing if someone in your family starts showing slight symptoms and you think it may be and for us it's you know a a house of seven I'm like well it's too late for you to just quarantine yourself we've been eating with each other we've been using the same bathroom it's like well that's it like, but it's like, we're not wrong, you, but do we need to quarantine from each other or just from the outside world? Are we quarantined as a family? Yeah, that's such a good question. So basically, you know, as everything has developed, we're asking more and more of people, right? It used to be that you could go and you could kind of go to work and come back. And then everyone who's not essential or everyone's essential, but everyone whose jobs are not currently considered essential, you know, are being asked to stay home. Then it was groups over 50. Now it's groups over 10. It's a lot to ask of people, but basically social distancing is the biggest, best, strongest tool we have. Mm -hmm. So this whole self-quarantine thing, self-isolate thing, social distance thing, however you want to look at it, it's basically trying to expose the fewest number of people possible. Mm -hmm. So when you're at home, you're right. You've, you've all been in each other's space. Nobody, especially with little kids can do the six foot, you know, distance thing. So probably if one person at home is exposed, likely are all exposed. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, there's still a way to mitigate that risk, which means that like, okay, let's just say if you have it, or you think you have it, like you have some symptoms of it, and no one else is showing those symptoms, it would be best for you to sleep in a separate room if, you know, a household has that option. Mm -hmm. Um, All the common spaces, like bathrooms and kitchens and things like that, need to be wiped down really well and frequently, you know, doorknobs, um, remote controls, phones, anything that everyone kind of touches and grabs, it would be best if you wipe that down really frequently, um, you know, minimize any touching of your face, hand wash with 20, at least 20 seconds with soap and water more rigorously. And really even within the house, for example, you would be separated. So, um, if possible, trying to keep at least that distance once you have symptoms. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, not everyone has that option, right? Like right now in New York City, we're all shoulder to shoulder, even when we're apart. So you have to be mindful that not everyone's home has those circumstances. And we can't ask everyone to just like go separate themselves when they have responsibilities and Mm -hmm. single parents. There's a lot of things that make that challenging, but we all just have to do the best we can. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Um, anything you want to add, AD? No, I'm I'm clarified and good over here. I'm going to the CDC website. <laughs> I'm you I'm need like, to you need good. to stay out of Target because you don't need no I'm pull up. Back outside. <laughs> you know, I, I, I understood over time about the the overwhelming the the hospitals being overwhelmed. My aunt works in a hospital. You know, hearing about all the workers, like people, everyone who's overwhelmed by this process, I understand why we do need to stay inside. It's hard, mm-hmm. and it's getting it's nice. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I do understand it. I do, because it seems, it, if I know the people that I can count on my hands are overwhelmed and want to run to the hospital, I can only imagine everyone else. So, you guys, yeah. stay inside. Yeah. Stay, stay inside. 
Yeah. And keep in mind, that doesn't mean that you can't open windows and have nice circulation in the house. It doesn't mean you can't go for a walk right outside your neighborhood. You know, we just have to be smart and not be gathering in groups and still going to bars and restaurants and still kind of pushing it. There's a lot of ways to do these video chats. There's a lot of, you know, we just need to reach out to each other and stay socially in touch. You know, even if we're socially right now kind of isolated, keep our sanity because this is we got a long way to go. This is a marathon. I think I, you know, it. Believe me, with everything that's going on, obviously this whole thing really, really does suck. But I've talked to people that I haven't talked to. You know, I've actually picked up the phone and called and not text. I've actually video chatted with a lot of people. I've taken time to put down my phone and stay off of social media and, you know, play with my kids. Um, and I mean, I play with them sometimes, but, uh, (laughs) you know, we've painted, I know I watch your stories, (laughs) (laughs) you know, we've painted more than we've painted before. Um, so as much as it does suck, I believe that there is a silver lining or a positive to everything and nothing happens. Everything happens for a reason. And Lord knows we don't know what this reason is. Maybe it is just to get more connected with each other and and stop relying on the good old handy this thing um, (laughs) all the time you know maybe we'll get back to writing letters you never know you never know i mean the thing is that you it's it's just a very humbling reminder that we need each other we love each other you know the longing that we have for that social interaction is is because of how we feel about each other. Yeah. And maybe this is an opportunity to kind of get back to that, get back to what matters. Yeah. There's more companies who are realizing that telemedicine, telehealth, teleworking, all these things are possible. So important. You know, yeah. Leading to a lot of advancements in that, you know, on that front. And I mean, it's better pollution wise. Pollution rates are kind of tampering off because people are off the roads. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of systems being put in place. A lot of grocery stores are going online. A lot of delivery places are still available. So it's not like we're in the middle of, you know, World War III. This is something that we can all get through. We just have to realize that it's for the greater good. And maybe that's a good reminder, too, that we should do things for the greater good for humanity. We're all yeah. connected. Yeah. We know more than ever that, that, like, it's a global world and it's a global society. And if we don't care about what's happening everywhere then we can all really be impacted yeah i do have one more question um how how long is it staying on surfaces uh it's saying like this amount of days for cardboard and this amount of days for plastic like we've been wiping down everything that comes from the grocery store with clorox wipes and how long is it actually do we do we know for sure how long it's staying that study that you're talking about and it's a good study it's very well done but it hasn't been peer reviewed yet which is kind of something in our world that we do before it's like law you know Mm -hmm. so it you have to understand that that study was done in a lab setting where everything is controlled things are monitored no one's moving or touching things Mm -hmm. and it just sits there and it's growing so like yeah cardboard was 24 hours plastic was a little bit longer it was in the air for a couple hours, but that doesn't make it airborne. Please, please, please. Oh, that y'all. was my next my question. Airborne. Can I can I walk through it and be like, oh, I got it. <laughs> Have it rain down. Right, on right. You. No, don't I don't want it. I don't want it. It's not airborne. It's not airborne. This is considered um, a droplet uh, respiratory spread. So that means the coughing, sneezing, etc. So the thing is that when it goes on a surface, it is still alive for a while. And that's why we've been pushing this whole thing about washing your hands. Cause it's really about all the surfaces you touch and all the hundreds of times you touch your face every day mm-hmm. and that spread it's by something called a fomite. And, and it's that, that virus like can be picked up, you know, and then mm-hmm. whoop, right on your face in your mouth. So the best thing to do, I would say is to, practice that good hygiene. I mean, if, you know, there's packages coming in, get rid of the packages. There's no reason to keep that stuff in your house anyway. Mm -hmm. Wipe down what you can wipe down. Obviously, don't be pouring bleach inside of foods and things that are going to make anyone sick, but you can clean them thoroughly. Vegetables and fruits should be cleaned anyway. Um, And other packages can be wiped down and then put away. You know, we're all being very cautious, which is 
wonderful. And we should have probably all been doing this all along because there are a lot of other viruses and things out there. Yep. But this is just a lesson to kind of be more aware without hopefully going past the line of being so consumed by it that we just become too anxious to do anything. Should we wash our hands before we use the bathroom and wipe? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, th- I, think, <laughs> I think about that all the time. And, it's, and then when yeah. this happened, I was like, hmm, maybe I should wash my hands before I use the bathroom. I mean, that's not a bad idea, but it's super important to definitely wash well afterwards. And then here's the thing, like with more studies coming out, the virus is being found in fecal matter, which makes which means it's in your GI tract. We didn't know that that was the case when this first, first happened. We just thought it was respiratory, but it is in your GI tract. So when you're changing baby diapers, when you're going to the bathroom, when you're doing anything, make sure even guys who sometimes leave the bathroom without washing their hands, wash your hands. It's super Nasty. important. <laughs> um, and then, mind- for my people to wash their hands as well. Hey guys, let's do this together. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and like, even at home, even though it's your own bathroom, you know, make sure you're wiping down those faucet handles. Because if you're washing your hands and then you turn the faucet off, like, you just undid everything, especially when you open the doorknob to go back out of the bathroom. So, like, if you could do temporary paper towels or something for now, although everything is kind of in short supply, so do the best you can. If you're using regular hand towels to dry your hands, wash those frequently, you know, change those out every week if you can, if not more. Yeah. Cool beans. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for coming on. This was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all heard her. Wash your hands, brush your teeth, wash your butt. (laughs) (laughs) Just because you're quarantined doesn't mean you can be dirty. (laughs) People are just not washing their bodies. That's not. That's a conversation for next week. I've taken right. showers every day. She's too excited. Thank you, y'all. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, lady. Talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye. bye.